All right, so we're going to talk about go get. Present. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through step by step of uh, what go get does. And so the very first step is I'm going to create a new GitHub repo. And to do that, I click the little green button up there on the right. So you can just walk through this later and the new button there. And then I'm going to, it takes me to this place to create a repo. And uh, I'm going to give the repository name. I called mine Golang Training. And give it a little description. And, and if you want to pay money, you can make it private. Otherwise, it's public. The students can get it free. And then add a git ignore file. And so this is a GitHub thing. And that file is going to tell my version control to, hey, don't upload certain files. Right? And uh, so that's a good thing to do. That's a GitHub thing. And then I click Create Repository. And then I clone this repository once it's created. I go into the repository. Right here, you can see I'm in Golang Training. And then I clone that repository to my desktop. And once that's cloned to my desktop, I choose the location. You can see I'm still in GitHub here. Where do you want it to be? I'm in GitHub. And I say, you know, I want that repo to be right here. And so this is where I actually created the Golang training repo that, you know, is on GitHub. And then I also have the files on my computer. And so now it's uh, been created there. And you can see I'm in Finder right now. And, uh, and Finder showing me, hey, there's, there's that folder. And inside that folder, you can see, and this is a GitHub thing, you can see there's a a dot .git file, whoa, that was weird. I just like advanced slides. You can see there's a dot .git file, and that's a hidden file, and I have my hidden files set to show on uh, Finder. So if you don't see that in Mac and you're wondering what the heck's up, you have to actually explicitly go Google how do I show my hidden files. But that'll show up on the command line if you want to do it. And so and then there's also the git ignore file. So that just tells me that this has been initialized as a GitHub repo, and it's now tracking all the files and changes to those files in this folder. So now uh, I'm going to talk about setting up a folder structure, like how do we keep track of our code? How do we actually start to create folders and, and organize our Go code? And uh, this is the way I set up my Go code uh, for summer boot camp. And this is not what is called idiomatic Go code. And so idiomatic, first time I heard that, I'm like, what? Idiot automatic? Idiot automatic? Is it like a concatenation of, you know, idiot automatic? What is idio automatic? And uh, idiomatics, I looked it up, right, and this is just the English definition, is using, containing, or denoting expressions that are natural to a native speaker and appropriate to the style of art or music associated with a particular period, individual, or group. You know, so hey, we might say, hey, that's an idiomatic of the, you know, I don't know, Renaissance age, that music or that dress, or that's idiomatic of uh, Bauhaus, you know, or whatever. That's idiomatic of Depeche Mode era, or whatever, right? So uh, idiomatic is like basically how do people who speak this language and this culture do it? And so idiomatic go is like, this is the way you do it. So that's what that word means. And this is not idiomatic go, so I shouldn't start my packages my folders with a number. And I'm using the style for storing sequentially organized files. So that's why I'm doing it that way. But, uh, you know, so I just have, you know, it's just folders within folders within folders. And so let's, let's actually create, and so, you know, in, um, in uh, you can look, two things there I'll say about that. You can look at the Go source code to see how do they, they store their files. And I might have this. So here's the Go SDK. And, you know, and right in there, we actually have a source folder. I don't know if you can see that. That's their source folder, right? And then inside their source folder, they don't have github.com username, right? Because they are just, you know, they're the first space. <laughs> That's it, right? And, and uh, so the Go SDK, and the site, they have a source folder. And inside the source folder, it goes straight to their code. And so here is, here is like the format package. We've been using format print line. And then inside, we have files, OK? All right, well, that's cool. That's pretty easy. And one thing that's idiomatic is to have very short names. You don't want to create long code. You don't want stutter in your code. You know, like Java has a fair amount of stutter. You want your code names to be short, evocative, concise. And that's actually straight out of, uh, of the docs, you know, naming that way. So that's, that's format. And uh, let's see if we have, OK, so here's compress, gzip, you know, and they've got folders within folders there. Or the net is actually kind of a cool one, where we have net, and then we have like, you know, URL or HTTP. So just organizing folders, basically, is organizing your Go code. 
that you could see they weren't using numbers like me. So we're going to open our repo in WebStorm that we just created on GitHub. So I choose open right there. And then I go select it. And you can see I'm in WebStorm right here. And I open up my repo. And, uh, and then the first thing I want to do is I want to change my git ignore file. This is the default git ignore file that I selected when I was creating my repository on GitHub. It was automatically created. This has nothing to do, it's not Go code. This is actually some other language, I can't remember. But it's not Go code. And, um, and so, uh, but this is, this, these are the settings for GitHub to ignore certain files. And those are the default settings that GitHub gave me for Go programming. That's fine, I'll leave those all alone. But then I, I, uh, I add additional files. For WebStorm, I add those files to the top group. And then sometimes I also add these files down below, like images and things like that. So it's just basically, what don't I want being pushed up to GitHub, right? Like I don't want WebStorm's you know, files that it, use for, it uses for running WebStorm to be uploaded. So you can see that you know, if I go and I look at this folder here, I'm just looking to see if I can see it there. I don't see it, but I could do this. I could say uh, reveal in Finder. And in Finder, I have this .idea folder, and that's the WebStorm folder for running WebStorm. And it's got a bunch of crazy stuff in there. Um, and I'm, I say in my git ignore, ignore everything in the .idea folder. I don't, wanna, I don't want that put onto GitHub. I don't need to track the changes in that. So then I use a WebStorm for git commits. Once that's all set up, I, I now have GitHub available since WebStorm automatically recognizes, hey, this, this folder is a tracked repo. And then uh, it, all the version control stuff is available. And the way I use it is up here is there's a little arrow that pushes up, and then that's for committing changes. And so you push that arrow, and then you could say, hey, I want to commit and push. And you give it a little commit message right there, adds additional items to git ignore. And I take the check mark off of right there, perform code analysis, just because I found that that is like, I don't need to look at this code analysis. I found I didn't need to look at it. And so it just removes a step in the process. So I ignore that check mark, and then commit and push, and then I push it up to WebStorm. And uh, that's it. And it tells me down here in the bottom, hey, your push was successful, pushed one commit up to GitHub. And so that's like, you know, as I change code, add code, and then push it up to GitHub, it's putting it up on GitHub. And then other people have access to it, and it's backed up, and it's accessible to me or anybody else, you know, whoever might want to work with it. Any questions? Hmm? In the uh, git ignore file, um, if we put a folder name and a slash, does that include everything that's in the folder? I don't have the perfect answer for that, because you saw there's a little redundancy there. Yeah, that's what puzzled me. Right, I have dot IDEA. Maybe if I did some stars after that, it'd be fine. Right? Mm. It's kind of like I got some redundancy, but I don't know where I got that stuff or why I put it in. It seemed like there's a reason at the time, but there was probably a cleaner way to do that. Good question. Um, I have a question. What's up? This might be uh, actually kind of more backwards, but I've never worked with GitHub, so mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like trying to find it by the air to pay my GitHub. Yeah, yeah. And um, now, as far as uh, WebStorm, um, I would, um, as far as linking any file that I'm doing to automatically upload to GitHub, how I, that's the part that I've missed totally that I, I, don't, I don't get. Mm -hmm. Like, how would it automatically? So WebStorm will automatically recognize when you have a .git file in the folder that you open and says, oh, this is a repo. And then it will uh, just enable um, uh, version control. I'm pretty sure that the way, that's the way it works. As we work with it, if that doesn't happen, let me know and I'll, I'll figure out. Maybe I'm forgetting that I set it up at some point long ago. And Maybe it needs to be said that it's not automatically pushed up to GitHub. You have to push it. It's what's automatic is that it recognizes it's a repository by the .git file, but you decide when to push it because you decide when you want to have the version break. Yeah, the thing is, is like um, right now that means that WebStorm doesn't know where my GitHub repo or where to send it to. And that's the part that's missing. Mm -hmm. How does WebStorm know? Where okay. So I'll, we'll, we'll figure that out, troubleshoot that together, right? And uh, we'll do that after I do these things. We'll get it going. But um, the main, so the question is basically, you know, why isn't WebStorm 
recognizing GitHub on your computer and pushing, right? Yeah, so we'll, we'll figure that out. So just hold that question when we're done with these presentations. Make sure you grab me and we'll do it. We'll get that going today. And the other thing about GitHub is, yeah, you know, when you first start using it, it's like, I don't quite get it. I don't get GitHub. And then after a while, you're like, well, that's pretty cool. And then after a while, you're like, well, that's really cool. Right? Like the first thing is like, okay, I'm backing my code up. Okay, I can share my code. Okay, I can go back and find, you know, how my code looked at any point in time. Right? Oh, that's cool. So that, that's just like something that, you know, the main thing is just start using it and you'll start to um, become conversant in it. So I can check my commits at the terminal using git log and I can see that the commit I just made is actually there. And uh, if you're new to GitHub, don't stress this stuff, but you can kind of just look at the commands and for that command I ran git log, that's it, right? And uh, and that's that's just a closer screenshot of that. Adds additional items to git ignore file. That was my commit. And then I can check those commits on GitHub and I see that, oh, that actually came up to the web. So that's what that illustrates. Uh, hey, Carson. I see. Sorry I'm late. I, no big deal. I went to go make a new bank account and I took longer than I thought. And I hadn't, after that, I hadn't eaten anything all day. So yeah. I was like, oh, I need to go get some food. Really yeah, no, I totally hear you. I, I, had, I ate a five-minute burrito in my office right before class. It's like this big. It's like, okay, five minutes, let's go. All right, so now we're going to recreate Hello World. And so we're just kind of like seeing how WebStorm GitHub work. So create a new uh, directory. And again, for sequentially naming, I'm not using idiomatic, and I'm giving numbers first. And there it is. And you can see how this all works. Like this is me actually building the course from, you know, and Hello World first file. And then there's Hello World first file, right? And I've done some more. And now that code's on GitHub. So recreate it, and then we put in the code, and it says, hey, your SDK is not defined. And so I click that little button up here in the top right, set up SDK. And uh, what goes in here for the path? Where would I find that? What, what's, what do we call that? What's the go, go environment variable called for the path? It's called either go path or go root. Which is it? To the go, go SDK, not the go workspace. Go SDK, software development kit. It's going to be the go root, and that's going to be user local uh, go on a Mac. And so that would be right here, user local go, right there. So that's just where the go was installed when it installed. Yeah. And uh, recreating Hello World, setting the Go SDK path in WebStorm. So that's what I'm setting it there. Same thing I just showed you. And now the path says, hey, user local go, right? And, uh, and now um, I've created my file, so I'm going to push it up to GitHub. So I click that little arrow up here in the top right. And, uh, and then I add a commit message, and then I do commit and push. And, uh, and there's, when I run git log, I can see, oh, there's my commit. And, uh, and if I went up and looked at GitHub, I could see it there too. So now that we've done all that, all of that was just sort of establish my first file and to demonstrate how to use go git. All right, and that took uh, 13 minutes. <laughs> so uh, I think I'll stop and restart, and this will be the go git video right here. That was just recreating.